Hello and um, welcome to the latest edition of What Does the Giraffe Say with me, Kathleen Ritorno. We are an organisation that aims to reconnect people in conservation by holding live interviews. Today I am very happy because we're doing slightly different. Um, it's a bit of a Christmas special as I don't just have one guest, um, but at the minute I have four and we are hoping that several others are going to join in afterwards. Um, today's focus is all about safari guides and the impact that 2020 has had on the industry and the hopes of the future. Um, so we're going to start off alphabetically and go and go across. So, um, Abby, if I could hand over to you, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the in the industry. Uh, thank you, Catherine, and uh, all uh, uh, our, the nature lovers who could join, you know, this live show. I send you warm greetings from Kampara, Uganda. Uh, Uganda is in East Africa, for most of you who don't know, just uh, bordering Kenya, uh, Tanzania, and Rwanda. Um, I'll quickly give you a introduction about myself. As uh, uh, Catherine mentioned, I'm Abia Wamir. I, I am a born and uh, lived for my entire life in Uganda. Uh, and uh, uh, immediately after my university, excellent. Okay, well, well, what will the thing? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm having a few difficulties here, but hopefully that, um, that everyone back home is doing okay. Can I ask you someone to back home if they could just let me know if they can hear? In tourism, or conservation, uh, I'm a journalist by training. I, I did journalism major in public relations, and immediately after I got an opportunity. Uh, to work with the United States Agency for International Development. Okay, um, Abby, as we're having a few issues with um, people hearing you, um, so let's let's hope that the, the echo would um, will go. Let me um, just see if. If you're still, oh, we've lost that, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, in which case then, Eric, we'll hand over to you. If you can tell us a little bit about yourself um, and where you're based and how you got involved in guiding. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Catherine, for this opportunity. As you have heard, my name is Eric Ndolere. Uh, born in Uganda, raised up in uh, southwestern Uganda. And I, 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 I grew up in between two national parks. That's the Queen Elizabeth National Park and uh, Wind Forest Gora National Park for mountain gorillas. So I'm born a conservationist. I, I grew up with wildlife just in the backyard and which uh, made me to pick the interest to be in the conservation rest, uh, right away when I was still a kid. Uh, I immediately after the graduation in wildlife and uh, tourism management, I worked with gorillas as a uh, a ranger guide guiding people to gorillas and also habituating some families making them get used to people for two and a half years then from there i moved to Matson falls which is in northern uganda we also worked in conservation for six years after that i joined uh, uh, the general safari industry where i moved all over the country and all over the east africa taking tours in different destinations i've also worked with uh, GCF, Giraffe Conservation Foundation, where we trans, uh, translocate uh, giraffes from one area to another. I've also worked with uh, different uh, uh, conservation projects where we capture the animals like lions, we put the collars, uh, the satellite coordinates and everything. Also with elephants projects. So I've been uh, in for conservation in all my entire life. So that's Eric. 
and I greet everyone who is uh, following us. I know everyone on, uh, online is a conservationist. And uh, thank you so much, Catherine. Ray, you, 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 are, you are such an amazing person to bring us together and also being there for the wildlife all the time and also making uh, awareness to everyone. So thank we do you appreciate very much. for your effort. Yeah. Thank so you. I'll There's lots of people back home yeah. as well um, who seem to know you. Eric, you seem to be a bit of a, a local celebrity. Lots of hellos going on online. Um, James, if I could hand over to you, could you tell us a little about, about yourself and your background? Uh, thank you so much, Caitlin. Uh, yeah, my name is James. I'm speaking from Wangi National Park. So thank you so much to everyone who is watching live streaming as well. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, having time to listen to us. So I'll tell you a story of how I got into conservation. I was born and raised in Wangi National Park. So besides the fact that I grew up uh, on the full steps of uh, Wangi National Park, I got a family of uh, guys. Everyone in my family is a uh, safari guide. So what happened and uh, what transpired to, uh, for me to be a guide is when I grew up, Everyone uh, in the village where conservation is, I grew up in a, a place called Mikiam. It's uh, just inside the national park with a lot of uh, Zim, scouts and trainers, people doing conservation, voluntary work or removing snail wires and bush, as well as a local patrol around the Wange National Park. So, uh, as I grew up, I grew up with that uh, spirit of conserving nature, wildlife, and uh, having a good uh, relationship with wildlife as well. So right now I'm working for Machawa Safaris, which is uh, in Zimbabwe and Botswana as a private safari guide. I joined the industry in 2017 here in National Park. The only thing I uh, was like painted or conservation and our land research project. We can help uh, we use to educate the communities, try and reduce more conflicts with all kinds, trying to reconnect people with nature as well, try to give them a good picture that our animals, they are our friends, we must live uh, good with them as well. Because in the community, is close to Wangi National Park. Most of the people they, they know that when you see animals, it's good to them. So they have kind of education and uh, that time to be taught how to interact with animals. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, James. Um, I think I've said too earlier, we were very lucky to have spent some time in Zimbabwe and it's an absolutely beautiful country. Um, Riz, we're going to hand over to you now, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your background. Yeah, sure. Hi, Kath, and um, greetings to everyone. In fact, I should say, Jambo, uh, this is how we say it in Kenya, um, means hi. Um, so yeah, I, I've been born and brought up in Mombasa, Kenya. Uh, I grew up in the uh, in tourism family business. Uh, I got the experience from there. Uh, I used to see my dad work and my family you know, do a lot of airport transfers, bringing clients from, the, from abroad, take them for camping, safaris, and so forth. So recently, I just moved to Nairobi. It's been about two years, and uh, I've registered my own company now since I'm in Nairobi, and I'm still focusing in the tourism industry. And yeah, let's see um, what, what's what's in store for us now. And uh, uh, if there's anything, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm willing and open to any questions and to discuss further. Excellent, thank you. Uh, well, it looks like, unfortunately, Abiyaz has dropped out. We're hoping that he'll be able to come back in as we do uh, continue the conversation. Um, so, Eric, is going to be you up next. Um, obviously, we can't talk about anything at the moment without talking about COVID and the impact it's had. Um, it's, it must have had a huge detrimental uh, impact for, for guides. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what 2020 has been like for you um, and how you kind of got through it?
Yeah. Eric, can you hear us? Mm. While we're waiting for... Uh, Kassan, uh, can you come again? Uh, because uh, the, the line is not clear. I can quickly uh, no just uh, break problem, breaking. Eric. I don't know whether it's my signal, which is not uh, my reception, which is not good. Okay, no problems. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about how COVID has had an impact on, on your guiding career and how you've managed to get through 2020? Okay, looks like Eric's having some connection issues as well. That's the, the joys of Wi-Fi. Wherever you are in the world, it can be awesome, but it can also be a problem. Um, James, so that means it's coming over to you. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, so... I'm back online. Uh, Maybe my reception is not good. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, we can hear you. If you want to go ahead, Eric. Yes, Catherine, I'm just, uh, can you hear me very well? I can, yeah. If you just want to talk, and we'll be able to hear you. Okay, can you bring the question back? Because just uh, when you asked me and uh, I went offline a bit, uh, it wasn't clear at all. No problems, it happens. Um, how has COVID impacted your work um, and how have you got through it this year? Actually, like uh, Catherine, is, uh, this is a very, very difficult uh, situation I have ever been in. Uh, this reminds me the, the situation when I lost my dad and I was uh, sitting for the final exams and I had nobody to, to, to be my side. And, and how have you got through it? How, what advice would you give the other guys to get through 2020? Okay, James, we'll hand over to you while we're waiting to see if Eric's connections a little bit wonky today. Uh, well, so I would say the, the coronavirus uh, pandemic disease caused a very steep change in tourism, not only in Zimbabwe, say globally as well. So if you look at how sensitive tourism is, uh, it actually declined around 70 percent if they are looking at statistics, which was the record which lasted uh, 30 years. So we were looking for the, uh, building a better tourism in Zimbabwe. As young guys, new new guys, we actually wanted to make it better and better as uh, we started uh, getting more deep into conservation. But now because of at the coronavirus, uh, most of the sector has gone down almost. Perhaps. It's actually reduced now, but uh, we had very, very problems in trying to work with the situation. It's been very hard to, to, to cope with the situation as well. Sure. Um, and Riz, how about you? How, how have you found it? Well, certainly it's impacted the tourism industry heavily. Uh, Kenya being, uh, you know, heavily dependent also on the tourism industry. Uh, after we found out that, um, you know, um, the COVID is, uh, with this uh, sanctions, no power, the curfews, um, all the projections that us uh, tour operators had in place, uh, you know, everything just goes down the drain. Um, uh, I even feel bad for, you know, the wildlife because everyone used to go into, into, into the park. Um, definitely, it you know, affected the, um, the people. Uh, I think a lot of people lost jobs, especially in the tourism industry. Um, hotels had to close down and some of them are still closed. And I don't even know if they're going to open. Um, I have some emails that I've received for some of the hotels that we work with. And uh, they don't have any projections for the first two months in 2021 if they're going to be open or not. Um, in terms of uh, finance, yes, uh, it's affected. Uh, it's affected, uh, uh, you know, in all in all aspects. I would say, 
we we personally had projections. We we had even signed up with uh, Toyota Kenya, and you know, we were going to purchase new Land Cruises to take our tourists into the park. We had a lot of projects uh, in mind, but uh, everything got devastated. So I don't know. I'm trying to be optimistic, and uh, let's see what 2021 wants to be. Um, though I must say thanks to all the local Kenyans who really uplifted. So all of a sudden we saw a change. A lot of the local market supported us. Now you can see the, um, the locals want to go out, they want to explore what, what their own home country is, what about. And they, um, we're trying to sell packages. Uh, we've had some communication with uh, the hotels and we've, told, we've talked to them. If they could lower the rate just to manage the costs and so that also the local Kenyans can enjoy as well. So they've, they've come up with a very good uh, uh, strategy. They've lowered the rates in, uh, for, for local Kenyans. So yeah, I think there is, uh, there is some way there's a compromisation. People are trying to work. I think we just want to make the economy back up again. Everybody wants to move on. So uh, let's see. That's why I was saying let's let's see what 2021 is. And I'm I'm trying to be optimistic and have an open mind. Um, we've got some forecasts for 2021. If everything goes back to normal, we we, we pray that things goes good. Thank you, um, Abby. As it looks like you're back in the in the conversation, so welcome back. Um, I'm not sure if you heard the question, but we're talking about how COVID has um, impacted you in 2020. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Catherine and uh, uh, our friends online. Uh, the network seems to be challenging me more than and, uh, Eric. Uh, but yes, by, but to be specific, I think that the travel industry has been the most uh, hard hit with, uh, you know, international borders closed with curfews in place. Um, it, 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 everything has, you know, has shut down. And, uh, you know, from uh, from the guiding, as Eric mentioned, to to us who who run the, the the safari operations and our friends in the in hotel and lodging industry it's this this been uh, uh very very tough but um, it's now nine months i can't believe that it's nine months since we stopped working uh but we are still alive um the, i want to give a message of hope that this industry has survived uh, several challenges. I remember uh, when he, when Ebola hit uh, West Africa, the entire of Africa, you know, was affected, especially for us in East Africa. Um, but you know, we came back uh, uh, stronger. So I have a belief that we are going through these challenging times. But uh, sooner than later, we'll be back. Uh, I want to, you know, thank all uh, the, uh, the guys who are listening in and that love nature and that have supported us over years and believed. And for not canceling uh, the trips, because uh, even when we've had all this time uh, without working, we have hope because more than 80%, especially from where I sit as a tour operator, more than 80% of our safaris were never cancelled but rescheduled. And we've, we are starting to see people uh, getting to inquire about 2021, uh, others uh, inquiring about 2022. Uh, our partners, Uganda Wildlife Authority, uh, has been doing a fantastic job putting up promotions even when they came in late to be promote uh, to be you know put in effect so i have hope even in this challenging time so i i wanted just to share that because there are so many things to cry about there are so many things to regret but i think the key message is is of hope uh to see all these uh all our our borders open uh, for travel, uh, especially in East Africa, uh, Rwanda, where we work, and Uganda. 
and trying to put in safety measures to make sure that uh, people who can, you know, uh, I want to use the word risk, who can risk to, to travel now, actually get rewarded uh, by coming and enjoying our, our wonderful uh, destination safely and they go back to their, you know, great stories. For sure. I mean, we've got a comment here coming through from Sandy Sale. And she said that she actually recently travelled to Uganda uh, with a group of adventure consultants in Uganda. Um, and they had the most amazing experience actually with Eric um, and Brian. And the, she said there were so many safety measures in place throughout the trip. And I guess as well, if you're going now, um, you're pretty much you're going to have a bit of an exclusive holiday as well. Yeah, no, and the, the other thing Catherine wanted to share is that um, uh, this, the, what, what what this period, you know, has done f to nature, uh, it has really rejuvenated. I had an opportunity uh, to go out with a group of, uh, of journalists, uh, videographers and photographers uh, for the entire two months in partnership with Uganda Wildlife Authority. We are doing live you know, coverage we did, uh, we tracked uh, gorillas four times and we, br we brought all that uh, on Uganda Wildlife uh, Facebook and Twitter pages live. You could see how, you know, nature, you know, is missing us, uh, but also how, you know, looking at babies, Uganda has received a record of more than nine ba uh, uh, gorilla babies in the habituated families, uh, you know, uh, from just June uh, uh, to September. So, yeah, and you know, you go out, you see baby elephants, you see baby giraffes, and he, he, anyone who comes uh, will be rewarded. I, I must say that. And um, yes, uh, they, like uh, Saria said, you know, uh, our destination partners from the, uh, from the government uh, stakeholders, like the Minister of Health, uh, civil aviation, uh, you know, the lodges, uh, putting up uh, out uh, uh, standard operating measures to make sure that our travelers are safe. It's been, uh, uh, you know, I think we need to approach them for that. Most of the lodges have put up uh, what uh, we are calling contactless, you know, uh, experiences where you, instead of being handled by so many uh, guys, you have, you know, a butler who is fully in charge of your welcome to uh, until you check out. So I just want to to share with our friends that I think if you can, um, you know, fry in, you will fry back uh, safely uh, because everyone is uh, has put up, you know, great measures to make sure uh, that our travelers that risk, uh, and I want to keep using the word risk because these are trying times to come here that we reward them with amazing experiences. Uh, you know, we've reduced the number of people we can put in, uh, in, our, in our jeeps or and cruisers, uh, just make sure that people have enough space. Uh, uh, we give out masks, uh, our guides make sure you are sanitized. Uh, every time you get out of the vehicle, we internally, and when I say we, we have been talking about uh, not just as our safari company, Africa World Explorations, but you know we've been working as a as a team uh, in Uganda and Rwanda to make sure that we work together. But also internally, as African World Exploration, Africa World Explorations, we've suspended uh, community engagements uh, that do not the way we cannot be sure that there will be social distancing and contacts uh and we you know for now we know it's uh, it's something that is uh, at the center of our um uh, of our operations but we've said for now we will give you the experiences we are sure that you will enjoy and return safely excellent and and james kind of um feeding into that from your perspective um, do you think the industry is going to be changing next year? Do you think there's going to be things done differently than, than previously? Uh, well, I would say it looks like it might be getting better, but the, the resuscitation or recovery is very slow. 
So we had uh, local tourism boosting up recently in two months or a month ago. Right now it's first event. Most of our camps are a bit busy. Uh, some international guests were coming, but uh, only a few compared to what had been happening when it was uh, still busy before the pandemic period. So if I tell you this, uh, when the coronavirus started, uh, most of the camps here in uh, Zimbabwe totally shut down all hotels and uh, lodges. So we had uh, none of them functional. A lot of people lost their careers, lost their jobs, and uh, those who were not more into conservation could uh, actually give up on conservation, start new ideas to start looking for a, a source of income in some of the areas where they can get something to feed the families. So right now, only a few of us were still trying to push on conservation as things are getting better right now, a few people are being called one by one to come back into their jobs. And it's actually getting better and better every day. I'm hoping 2021 it might be better than it is today. Thank you. Yeah, I think everyone's uh, hoping, is, aren't they, that it's going to be an improvement next year. Um, Ria, so kind of the same question for you as well, um, but also, um, do you think that if the situation remains the same, that we're going to be seeing a lot of people, um, like as James was saying, having to leave the industry and get other careers? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, um, I'm going to be uh, very optimistic, as I said. And uh, I feel that everything um, has a phase. And I just feel that um, this is just a phase. And I know we are going to go through this. Um, I see I have been watching the news as well. Uh, um, fingers crossed the, um, the vaccine uh, does its job. But um, also, uh, like I said, the local, uh, the local uh, industry is opening up. People, are, people want to explore um, their country. So um, I would say that uh, hang in there, uh, be strong <laughs> and uh, be optimistic. So yeah, I, 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 I don't I don't see uh, yes uh, there there have been some people that uh, have shut down their businesses, so hotels have to be shut down. But again, this is just a temporary phase, and uh, we pray that we get back up strong and more uh, able to you know provide the international market and the local market what we have to offer. Excellent, that's a nice attitude. I think it's, it's, it is important that in these times we've got to try and remain as as optimistic as possible and as positive as possible. Okay, so um, I've just got a few more questions left, and I can see there's some people back home. We've had lots of lovely comments coming through, lots of people saying that you guys are doing a great job, um, efforts and collaborations are inspiring. Other people are also sharing some of their, um, some of their times that they've been on safaris, um, seeing um, gorilla babies or elephants, giraffe, buffalo, all the things that kind of keep people wanting, wanting to go back for more. Um, if anyone has a question that they'd like to put towards our panel, then please pop it in the comments and I will do exactly that. Um, so we've got a question coming through from uh, Linda Haynes and she is asking that if there's any truth to poachers um, re-infiltrating during the downtime um, for safaris, if they're using this as an opportunity um, uh, to take the animals. Um, so Abias, if I could just start with you. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, uh, Arinda, that's that's true. Uh, we are seeing um, poaching on the increase, and I want to just give it a perspective. You know, uh, this shutdown or coronavirus pandemic, uh, what it has taught us, uh, has made us realize more beyond uh, in what observations have been telling us is how much uh, you know tourism supports conservation um more than 90 percent of the uh, park revenue in uganda comes from uh you know tourism from the concessions to the gate fees and gorilla permit fees and that casts across i think uh, the entire of africa uh since the lockdown 
you know uh, the packs had to draw back and and look at how can they keep running uh with the limited resources they had so one of the things they had to do was to cut on the operations and uh, of course they could not send the the rangers home they had to keep them on salaries but they had to keep to cut back on res- on operations and uh, mainly patrols were one of the areas that were affected uh, that meant that uh, you know uh, to reduce on on food portions and fuel for trucks running around patrolling protected areas uh, reduced and with uh, less traffic of, of tourists in uh, in our traditional uh, safari uh, trucks uh, sirens was created in in protected areas and poachers you know took advantage of that and started going in uh, for poaching uh, poaching both for bush meat uh that is both subsistence and commercial but also commercial uh, poaching uh for us targeting elephants mainly as you know uh this was all over uh, news in june we lost um, uh one of our most loved uh silver back gorilla mountain gorilla silver back uh rafiki that was killed by a poacher uh, who speared it in self defense because this poacher had laid a trap to catch uh, antelopes and uh, you know as he was going to check on his trap he, he bumped into this uh, habituated gorilla family and the gorillas know the intruders and uh, friendly uh, visitors so they realized he was definitely an intruder and the server back came in to defend uh, his family and this guy had experience you know uh, stabbed uh, this server back in the chest and killed it uh, which was very very unfortunate um but also we've seen increased bush poaching we've seen increased uh, uh, commercial poaching some elephants have been found Uh, dead without tasks that you know tells you what is the intention of killing um so that's that's an unfortunate uh, bit uh, uh we've been trying to to mobilize the government and, and conservation agencies that are doing a fantastic job and uh, i want to mention for those of you who support african wildlife foundation coming in support uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority giving them fuel uh, giving them uh, some ranger uh, you know re- uh, relief food and, and fuel uh, and, and you know uh, the patrol uh, packages you know to try and, and control that and you know as African Wildlife Foundation we run a program called care for rangers which is 100% uh, uh conservation you know uh, non for profit to support rangers that are usually injured in line of duty and uh, just three weeks ago we lost a ranger again to poachers uh, armed poachers as they were targeting elephants in chivari uh, one of the forests so it's a, it's a such a disturbing uh, reality Uh, it puts up a challenge of if communities are seeing the benefit of these uh, wildlands and wildlife uh, but also that uh, uh, wildlife trade that brings you know obscene money in, in into uh, the targets conservation uh, and the special award Icon, iconic wildlife species is a big challenge tourism can't try to match it we just have to uh, work together as international uh, with international communities to make sure that we sensitize people that ivory belongs to elephants that rhino horn belongs to rhinos and science has shown that actually the substance that forms the rhino horn elephant Uh, task is as good as the same is the same uh, particles that forms our our fingernails uh, that, that that forms the, the the horns of the cattle and take away all this myth of uh, how you know they they help people that 
uh, do all sorts of things that I don't want to discuss here because we all know the myth around rhino horn and and, and different uh, tasks. Uh, so it's a big challenge. According to uh, ICN, uh, I, uh, the ivory and and all these uh, irregular uh, trade surpasses, you know, um, drugs and 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 illegal. Uh, firearms in terms of bringing uh, illicit money. So it's something that uh, that is a big challenge uh, that is threatening African uh, wildlife uh, that, you know, we need to get out of our comfort zone and take it uh, head zone. Um, China is taking a step, uh, banning uh, this, the sale of ivory and, and rhino horn. Uh, and we have to call upon all the other you know, international organization. United States should come out and, you know, stop the sale of ivory uh, materials, uh, Malaysia and, and, and all these uh, other uh, countries uh, that high market uh, to African uh, illegal wildlife products. Yeah. Um, no, that's some really wise words. And then there's a lot of people back home that are resonating with what, what you've been saying. Um, we've also got someone commenting saying thank you so much as well, Abias, for the recent virtual tour in Uganda's national parks. Apparently you, you did a virtual tour and they're saying that they hope that sooner or later that tourism will stabilise again. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, so, Riz, I'm going to ask you a, a kind of a similar question. Um, but is there a way for people back home? This is a question that Sandy's asking, Sandy Sayer, she's asking. What ways can people support the rangers, guides, porters, wildlife and conservation efforts if they can't travel to Africa yet? Yeah, um, yeah, there, there's, lots, there's lots of ways to um, support um, these kind of organizations, conservations, um, to avoid this. There have been, um, there have been a few um, um, groups that I've been to, I've been, uh, I've been a member of some of the Facebook pages. Um, there's a website as well. What I could do is probably try and look, um, try and get you the genuine ones where I feel that they are the correct people. I could do a little bit of research for uh, Sandy Cell, if I'm, if that's the way uh, if you pronounce your name. Um, and I'll send it over to you, or I'll just inbox Sandy and I'll tell her, look, this is the uh, one, two, three, four, and these are the right places to donate, and you can send your contributions uh, to them directly. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so then I'm going to wrap up with the with the final question. We can see James is trying to come back in, so let's bring him back in. Um, so I wanted to find out, because obviously part of your roles for all of you, not only are you um, dealing with conservation and, and that kind of stuff, but your job by its very nature um, is a very social job. You're often with guests for a long period of time. You become friends with them. Um, and also, you know, I can see just from like on Facebook and things like that, how the, the connection remains. Um, do you feel like that kind of, that side has been has been lost as well, and, and and is it something that you're hoping to get back, um, James? If I could see, if I could start with you with that one. Uh, pardon, I didn't get the question. I had tried ah, to. Okay, okay, I'll repeat the question, um, and then maybe I'll start it over with Abby so you can um, get back in the conversation. Um, okay. So basically, your your careers as safari guides they're very social careers. You're dealing with guests all the time. Um, and you end up becoming kind of quite friendly with them and that kind of stuff. Um, so not having those interactions, what kind of, what impact does that have? Um, and as, has social media been a way for you to kind of remain connected with those who are passionate about wildlife? Mm, so I would say there's a, an impact, but not a, to that much greater extent. So we still do some social works with uh, guys from different places just to keep uh, connected with nature. Still I uh, travel to areas around the, the park, villages, teaching people. So on our day-to-day -day basis, we interact with people as well, trying to, to connect them with nature. So to us, it's uh, not only about the guests, but uh, bringing people close to nature, the communities, schools and uh, everyone around us as well 
And um, when you're working with the communities, James, do you have any favourite stories here of someone that maybe um, hadn't experienced nature before and you managed to give them that opportunity? Uh, we do have, we do have, uh, but what happens when you, you, you dealing with uh, the community, sometimes we have some challenges of those people failing to understand us. So it uh, really needs time and uh, a dedication. When we're going to those communities, sometimes telling people not to kill birds because to them, when they see a francolin, a guinea fowl, they think that's a uh, relish or meat. And uh, when they are doing poaching, they are doing it to feed their families. Most of the people around the park on the villages, they don't have jobs. So trying to convince them sometimes becomes very hard. You have to try and slowly connect them to nature. Yeah, I think that's very important. It's, it's once people are connected, then they're more determined to look after it. Um, so Abby, I was asking the same question to you. Um, how, how have you found um, the industry? Has it been different? Um, and how are you remaining connected? Um, it's been, uh, you know, tough, but um, we, we decided to uh, put up different projects uh, that would help us um, as a company, but also help the industry. And uh, like Bosco shared, I I worked with my team and we designed uh, Uganda's first virtual, virtual safaris, uh, partnering with Uganda Park Service. We went across all our national parks doing uh, Facebook Live showing, you know, uh, our travelers and friends what they have been missing in Uganda. And uh, um, I've been involved in several conservation uh interventions uh supporting uh development of um especially communication messages uh for different uh conservation organizations here i mentioned our own uh, care for rangers uh we've been trying to even change our strategy uh, strategy to see how we can involve uh, communities more and see uh, like uh, James mentioned how do we bridge uh, that community gap between uh, the protected areas and um, uh, and, and, and host communities so, uh, but also uh, I need to share with you that uh, since uh, uh, Uganda um, uh, uh, since uh, uh, September Uganda opened up for uh, for domestic uh, travel so some of uh, our local and uh, you know resident um, uh, expatriates have been going asking different packages to go around uh, we don't do all domestic uh, safaris we don't mix our travel experiences as a company but what we've been doing is is to help them uh, put up packages and they can do either they do self drive or hire our vehicle and one of our guides takes them. So it's it, we, we've been just trying to be creative to, to keep our, our teams together. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to train uh, competent uh, uh, safari guides. Eric can tell you there are not so many. So those you have, you don't want to lose them. And to keep the team, you have to be creative uh, and, and try to keep uh, all of them. But also we've started uh, running a few farm trips. So we get uh, some of our international uh, agents coming in uh, to give confidence to travelers uh, that it is, it is safe to travel. And that's, you know, how we are keeping ourselves uh, busy. Excellent. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. Eric, it seems we've got you back in the room, which is incredible. Hopefully we'll be able to hear you. I've unmuted you. Um, so, Eric, we were just talking yeah. about how um, people have made changes due to the way that obviously uh, the industry is different to how it used to be. What changes have you seen um, with your work um, in terms of how things have been done differently? And what do you do to remain connected with people back home? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Catherine, and uh, also allow me to first apologize to the 
to the listeners and the all conservationists who are following us. Uh, my reception is not good, that's why I went off, but I'm happy to be back. <laughs> and uh, actually, it's, uh, we are trying to be more innovative and also move with the change. We are in a changing world and the situation is more challenging. And then we are trying also to catch up. Uh, we have uh, we have involved everyone on the board, especially the guys who are very close to the protected areas. We make sure that they get to know that uh, uh, the situation has changed and they have to continue conserving irrespective of uh, having no income, not benefiting from uh, uh, from the tourism because we have got uh, uh, like uh, everything on standstill. We have got a few people are coming in and then uh, we are mainly depending on the on the local tourism. Also, we have had uh, the chance of uh, hosting some uh, top, top agents, especially from the, the, the hills of Africa, led by the, the sand side. They were here with me and we moved all, and then we took them uh, around what we are doing, how we are following uh, SOPs, how we are containing the spread of the COVID and we are making sure that uh, people can start uh, again traveling. And also we, are, we, are, we have come up with all the procedures to make sure that uh, the wildlife is safe, especially the, the great apes and primates. So we have uh, been innovative on the ground and also we make sure that uh, uh, the trucks, the vehicles and everything, uh, they, they, they are safe for everyone to travel in. And also in terms of the conservation, however much we are not earning uh, money, but we still put in more effort, we still go out I moved from here from home on my own, even during the, the lockdown uh, without anybody, just with only a few friends to go and see whether the wildlife is still surviving very well. And we were able to move in a different uh, national parks even before opening up for the tourism. But then uh, at this point, we call everyone, everyone who is a conservationist, everyone who loves the wildlife, everyone who wants to protect uh, what we call the, 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 uh, the, the mother nature, traveling because we can't uh, sustain uh, wildlife and you can't do what you call total conservation without travel industry people are benefiting from the industry but again it's it's a way of protecting mankind if you don't protect my, uh, mother nature then you're not protecting uh, human beings and if you don't travel then you're not protecting uh, mother nature uh, we have been able to register some challenges as you have been following maybe the events in Uganda, we lost uh, uh, just one gorilla in the last 15 years because of the, the, the COVID situation. The communities were pushed on war and they couldn't survive more from the tourism. They had nothing to do. They started again sneaking back in the park just to hunt uh, for game meat. Uh, but uh, we have engaged now everyone around the park. We are trying to, to do as much as we can with the little revenue we are getting. I'm very happy with the uh, park rangers and all the conservations in the country and also all over the world, those ones who are following us. We get uh, more courage from you when you say, please go on and what. And then uh, we, we have also engaged uh, the younger generation so that this situation is temporary. We are going to go back to work. I went off uh, the air when you asked me the, the challenges about the year. It has been really more, more challenge to all the guides all over the world especially safari guides. Uh, most of them, they, are, they, are, uh, they, they earn when they go out, when they take two out. But now we earn uh, zero, zero income. If you don't go out, no, no any pay. Uh, but still, I do call everyone to continue with the conservation uh, strategy. I'm very certain that uh, uh, 2021, it was looking much better. We can get back. To, to, to the foot. We, we expect the, the tourism to rebound. And uh, if we can come together and we have people like you, Catherine, who can put the voice high, who can uh, re, like uh, stand high for the wildlife, for conservation all over the world, it can be real great for, for all of us and for the mankind. And then also we, we call, I call upon uh, everyone listening to us to be conservationists. You don't need to be a ranger. You don't need to be on foot patrol following the elephants or doing what or putting the, the satellite coordinates in, in the lions or in the leopards or whatever it is or habituating gorillas the way I did. But you can be a conservation a conservationist everywhere you are. You can join the, 
the good, good, good people. Oh, I think it looks right. like... Oh. And then it automatically you become a conservationist. So I do call everyone listening to us to follow whatever I have missed. I know these are great people online. They have shared important information. Please, even if you are in uh, North America, you are in Asia, you are in Europe, you are in every part of the world, join us. We save Mother Nature and the tourism industry will bound back and the guides are going to survive again. Thank you so much. Excellent, thank you so much for that, Eric. I really enjoyed that. And um, we're getting yeah. lots of comments as well saying, welcome back to you, Eric, and also some great insight and advice. Yeah. Um, Stacey was saying, Stacey Satterfield, she's saying that she spent some time with you in Uganda and Rwanda, and she's nicknamed you Extraordinary Eric. <laughs> um, yeah. And then just hoping to get back out into Africa next year. Um, I think that can you allow me to can you allow oh. me to greet some few people. Okay, I can see people are following. Up, they have been sending me some message. They have missed me from the beginning. Uh, Stacy, Mary, Machrori, they are under Sunday Sari. I've got uh, Jane and many people who have come on the ground and uh, who have uh, done a lot. I've been shared the they have shared the photos for the communities like uh, the Christmas gifts they have sent down here to people and also involved in uh, groups of the women's uh, waving with them and uh, going out with the researchers in the field. Uh, Catherine Rich is uh, it's what makes us uh, keep moving. If we know there are people like you, there are people like those ones I've mentioned and others who are following us like uh, Claire and what, everyone following on this program. They make us to feel strong and say, let us continue moving. Let us go out and, serve, uh, and save this wildlife. Let us uh, join all other conservationists and we make sure that uh, the mother nature is protected. Excellent. Otherwise, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this program. Yeah. No problems at all. Um, we're, we're getting lots of like um, happiness for, for the positivity. Um, Riaz, I'm going to start wrapping things up. I'm just going to hand back over to you for a second um, to ask what kind of, what closing comments would you, would you like to leave? Oh, you need to unmute yourself, Riaz. Sorry, Kat. Um, yeah, um, like I said, I'm going to be very optimistic, and I just wish to, um, uh, um, I don't want to repeat, but the way uh, one Eric said, that uh, everyone out there, please, um, uh, don't, uh, I know uh, COVID is out there, but we have the safety measures. We'll always respect the protocols, uh, social distancing, giving you the mask is the way uh, we are safe. We sanitize our cars. Uh, we've also come up with some few strategies. Like if you just if you follow my page on Art Web Africa, I just posted a picture. Um, we're trying to have breakfast out in the in, in the open. So recently we had um, uh, some clients. We took them out to Masai Mara, and we had a bush breakfast. So what we did is we had a Masai cloth put on the bonnet, and we had uh, warm chai and kahawa coffee and they had breakfast in the outdoor you see so yeah there is a lot of ways and uh, uh, strategies to go around this um, even you can move in an open land cruiser like the picture I, I, I have there as well so yes there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ways to go around about it so please don't fear come down give us a call um, let's um, let's conserve energy um, the, conserve our uh, animals our nature um, there's a lot there out there that uh, people need to visit and see um, give the children an experience, not a gift, uh, you know, a toy or something. Give them to see the real zebra, you know, crossing. What's a zebra crossing? That's, that's when they see, oh, that's a zebra, you see. Um, just an example. But, yeah, um, there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, uh, game to be seen here. We've, uh, we've got the ocean. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be optimistic. And uh, I just wish everyone to come into Kenya. And uh, visitors, give me a shout. I will personally be there. If there's anything, give me a, 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 an email and uh, we'll tackle the issue. Excellent. Thank you so much, Liz. And James, same question for you. What kind of closing marks would, uh, remark would you like to leave? Uh, what would you like to say in, as your closing remark? What final thoughts would you like to give people? Uh, 
So I would say right now is things are now everyone knows that there is a coronavirus and it's a deadly disease. It doesn't mean we stop tourism. Given an opportunity that uh, planes are coming, international guests traveling, and we resume tourism, it can be possible for them to come again. Uh, those measures that have been mentioned, we are pra practicing them and they are really working. And uh, you can see how those uh, several vehicles uh, are structured. It's uh, a lot of air that flows in them. And uh, if you look at uh, the structures and uh, rooms that are built in most of these uh, tourism facilities, they can accommodate uh, people very safe and uh, they can live there without getting any coronavirus. Thank you, James. Thank you. And Abby, that's, that's going to be the same question for you as well for your, your closing remarks. Um, thank you so much. I want to start from there, Catherine. Uh, like Eric mentioned, for for thinking about this, um, uh, you know, it's very easy uh, to forget. And like Jim started, when uh, such a messages don't go out, people get discouraged and can easily uh, switch from being uh, safari guides to uh, to anything else. Uh, start driving matatus uh, to look for survival. So I want to I want, I want to really to thank you and all uh, the guys who could spare time uh, to listen. Uh, that's where I, I want to start from, uh, but also to uh, encourage people that uh, that Africa is safe. I know uh, there has there, there there's been a lot of uh, you know talk going around that when the West recovers from, uh, you know, the wave of COVID, Africa, uh, you know, it will come to Africa. And I think uh, that is really far-fetched. Uh, Africa is safe. Those who have made it here in the recent times, like Eric mentioned, you know, have got an opportunity to experience uh, Uganda. Um, we've been doing a fantastic job. But also, even when uh, the cases uh, are still there, the the tourism the main tourism uh, uh, corridor is one of the safest corridors uh it is a such a narrow uh, corridor with you know not so much contact uh with uh, with the people uh so whether you are coming to south africa to kenya i want to speak about uganda and rwanda that i'm sure of because that's where i have operations uh, you know the government uh, led by the Ministry of Health under the supervision of World Health Organization you know country resident offices uh, have been doing a fantastic job sensitizing people hands uh, hand sanitizing you go to to Chigari you see robots taking you know temperatures in the airport you come to Entebbe and you see how they are limiting even the number of people who can escort or will come uh, to, limit, to limit the number of people entering into uh, the airport. You see how the hotels have put in uh, all the safety measures, hand sanitizing before you even touch that door handle. Uh, I want to encourage people that uh, it is safe to come. But the, the key one is that wildlife has rejuvenated. You come here, you will be rewarded with uh, by amazing experiences, and uh, the other thing I wanted to you know to highlight, like uh, Eric mentioned and James and all my colleagues, is that this, the guides who have kept in, uh, the guys are uh, the guides and the guys who have conservation and tourism at heart. So you come now, you will be handled by the cream and the guys who you know, have uh, that drive uh, for nature, who take the job seriously, because those who had come to make money have left after nine months. So those who have stayed are uh, guys actually who who love uh, conservation, who love tourism. And uh, I want to add a voice that uh, the future looks bright, 
we are starting to get people interested in coming. Uh, in 2021, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, media information that is misleading. I want to dismiss. Uh, people will tell you about politics. There, is, there are politics everywhere. Uh, what, what unites us is not the politics. Uh, it is nature. And uh, that uh, should uh, keep us uh, united as we leave politicians to do uh, what they know. Um, so I, wanted, I want to use this, uh, my last opportunity to wish everyone uh, safe, merry uh, making holidays and, uh, you know, wish you uh, a better year coming, 2021, uh, uh, crossing uh, to 2021 will be, I think, the biggest achievement we will have made out of 2020. That has been a very difficult year. Uh, I am a believer, so I believe that we will uh, return, we will reunite into our worlds, and we will have the best moments again. We will pop champagne. I, I, I wanted, I want to cheat uh, for you. That as a company, we've made a promise that whoever comes uh, to to Uganda or Rwanda through us, we will pop champagne for them uh, at no extra cost. So, and that is going to that's going to go on in until 2021. So you better uh, come. And you don't have, you know, I'm not here to promote Africa World Explorations. I'm here to promote what I love. Uh, which is uh, nature. You don't have to travel to Uganda through us. The moment you come to Uganda, one guide will have a job. Uh, more than 15 Ugandans will benefit from that because of the multiplier effect of tourism. And uh, before you know it, you are supporting my my parents who grow, uh, who are who are agriculturists and supply maybe one or two hotels, tomatoes. So it is... Uh, I, it's that hope that I carry and share with everyone that this is going to end and smiles are going to come back. I, it, it amazes me recently, just been on a, on a safari trying to update our content. Uh, and you see communities seeing a, a, a tourist vehicle, how, you know, they follow you waving and smiling and it gives, it shows you how much that hope, you know, spreads uh, to everyone. So I want to say goodbye to everyone. I want to say, guys, have a, a wonderful uh, time and let's meet again soon. Excellent. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you, everyone, who's, who's been listening back home. Um, I've really enjoyed the chat. I know we've had a few issues with um, the, the technical side of things, but that's the way it is when we're all based in different parts of the world. Um, so thank you for everyone for coming on as well. I've really enjoyed your chat. You've been an absolute inspiration. Um, I'm actually going to finish with a comment that was left that I thought uh, resonated quite nicely, and that's from um, Amy Riddlehoover Green. And she says that so often people travel to Africa to see the animals, but come home with their hearts so full of the people they met and encountered along the way. And she says she's so grateful for all the amazing guides, drivers, property staff, everyone she's ever met on the way on her visits. And I think I can absolutely simplify, um, agree with her on that, that you will do an incredible job promoting wildlife. Um, and I know um, that everyone's incredibly grateful for the work you do. So for me, I'm going to sign off. So take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.